The BRDM-2 is still an indispensable armored reconnaissance vehicle, but its low ballistic protection and firepower have caused an endless debate since the beginning. But this vehicle managed to make its mark in history and become a legend. Now, we are investigating the BRDM-2, the scout and cavalry of the Eastern Bloc armies. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. The BRDM-2 takes its name from the initials of the Russian words Boyuvaya Grazviye Davatelnaya Dazornaya Mashina, which means Combat Reconnaissance Patrol Vehicle. Its hull has also been used for many other missions such as the anti-tank guided missile or air defense missile carriers. The BRDM-2 has fought nearly all corners of the world in the last 60 years, which undoubtedly makes it one of the most recognizable Soviet Russian military vehicles. To better understand the BRDM-2, we should closely look at the history and geography of Russia. Russia has been located on the vast steppes extending from the European borders from northwest to southeast and the Asian borders from west to east. Controlling this extensive land has always been a challenge for the Russians. The experiences of the 1904 Russo-Japanese War made the staff of the Tsar's army realize how helpful armored cars could be in solving this problem. But the infrastructure of the Russian Empire was not sufficient to design and produce this type of vehicle. So, St. Petersburg initially decided to supply armored cars from abroad. The production of domestic models, like the Russo Bolt Type M, started just before the First World War. Yet, the amount of production was still too low. Following the founding of the USSR, Stalin, who came to power in 1922, quickly industrialized the country. Thanks to increased industrial capabilities, Moscow decided to mechanize the Red Army with five-year plan in 1927. As a part of this plan, the production of the BA-27, the first Soviet-designed armored car, began in the same year. It was just the beginning. From 1927 to the German invasion in 1941, Soviet engineers designed around 30 new armored cars. Still, the most notable Soviet armored car was the BA-64, which entered into service in 1942. The Red Army frequently and successfully used it in reconnaissance and road security missions during the Second World War. As the Iron Curtain raised in the middle of Europe, the USSR began to work on a new armored reconnaissance vehicle that would replace the BA-64 and incorporate new technologies. The first prototype of this vehicle, called BRDM, was designed based on the BTR-40 and completed in 1956. With the introduction of the BRDM-2 in 1962, it was renamed as the BRDM-1. The first production models had an open top. The later variant had a fully closed hull, but the 7.62mm machine gun of the vehicle was still not under armor protection. The BRDM-1 did not have a night vision system and it was not suitable to fight in the NBC environment. So the Soviet army requested a new armored reconnaissance vehicle to replace the BRDM-1 in 1959. It would have improved amphibious capabilities, better armament, better observation capability under the armor, NBC protection and the night vision equipment. The first prototype of the BRDM-2 presented for testing in 1960 had a very distant resemblance to the current vehicle. This vehicle had one 14.5mm KPB machine gun without armor protection and a 5-person crew. The second prototype was completed in 1962. Different from the early vehicle, it had the same turret as the BRT-60, a pressurized hull and a 4-person crew. The result was satisfactory. So Gorikovsky, after Maybini Zavod, shortly gas, began the serial production in 1964. But in those years, the company was also preparing for the serial production of the BTR-60PB. The Soviet army was giving priority to this wheeled armored personnel carrier. As a result, the initial production rate of the BRDM-2 became extremely low. In 1965, Gauss could only build 80 vehicles. The Soviet army had planned to have 600 BRDM-2s until 1965, but the company could produce only 440 vehicles. Later, the production rate increased and the Arzamas machine building plant also began to build the armored car in 1982. In addition to licensed production variant, over 9000 BRDM-2s were delivered until 1989. 
The early variant of the BRDM2s had two air intake hatches with trapezoidal shaped covers that opened backwards similar to BRT60. The later models had air inlets with rectangular shape covered with shutters. The late version of the BRDM2 produced in the 1970s had six convex mushroom shaped caps above the air inlets similar to the BRT70. This design prevented the ricocheting bullets and shell splinters from entering the engine compartment. During the first Cold War, all Soviet motorized infantry divisions had 28 BRDM2s, 12 in the reconnaissance battalion and 4 in each tank regiment. Also, all tank divisions had 28 BRDM2s, 12 in the reconnaissance battalion, 4 in the motorized infantry regiment and 4 in each of the 3 tank regiments. The vehicle was cheap, easy to operate and reliable. These features helped the BRDM-2 to be accepted in the inventory of nearly 40 countries close to the Soviet Union quickly. The four-person crew of the BRDM-2 consists of a commander, driver and two reconnaissance crew, one of whom acts as the gunner. The vehicle is 5.75 meters long, 2.35 meters wide and 2.31 meters high. The combat weight is 7 tons. The 140 horsepower Gauss 41 petrol engine provides a maximum road speed of 100 km per hour. The range is 750 km. The BRDM2 can negotiate 0.4 meter vertical steps and 1.25 meter trenches. It is amphibious with a water speed of 10 km per hour. The BRDM2 has one 14.5 mm KPVT and one 7.62 mm PKT machine guns. The ballistic protection of the vehicle is weak. The front arc of the BRDM-2 is only resistant to standard 7.62mm NATO ammunition. The 7.62mm armor-piercing munition can penetrate the front armor from a distance of 200 meters. The side armor of the BRDM-2 is even weaker. The 127 by 99 ammunition of M2, which is widely used on armored vehicles of NATO, can penetrate the front armor from a distance of 500 meters and the side armor from a distance of 2000 meters. So why did Soviet engineers choose such a weak armor? The answer is in the vehicle's mission definition. The BRDM-2 was designed to locate the positions of the enemy units in a possible third world war, not combat them. The numerous rivers and water canals were dividing the European battlefield. So high speed and amphibious capability preceded ballistic protection. The BRDM-2 was armored enough to escape from the area when faced with resistance. Keep that in mind that the fire control and stabilization systems were still primitive in the 1960s. Hitting a fast moving BRDM-2 was not as easy in those years as today. According to the military doctrine of the Eastern Bloc, this vehicle was neither the primary nor the only element of the reconnaissance battalion. In the Soviet army, the reconnaissance battalion of a division was also an individual spearhead assault force. This battalion consisted of 300 to 400 soldiers, 6 armored command and control vehicles, 12 armored infantry fighting vehicles, 6 main battle tanks, 12 armored reconnaissance vehicles, electronic reconnaissance vehicles and many support and radar vehicles. Also, 6 pieces of armed helicopters were supporting the reconnaissance units. This battalion, advancing 100 km in front of the main forces, had its kitchen and water treatment equipment. So when the BRDM-2s encountered strong enemy units, they would leave the task of fighting them to the battalion's other heavily armed and armored vehicles. The Soviet BRDM-2s gained real combat experience in Afghanistan. The vehicle generally carried out convoy escort duties instead of reconnaissance missions in this war. However, its ballistic protection was inadequate against the RPGs and landmines. The Afghan Mujahideen managed to destroy a large number of BRDM-2. The Soviet soldiers had preferred to sit not inside but on the vehicle during the convoy escort missions. This preference, created by real combat experience, increased the possibility of casualty caused by the small firearms but also increased the chances of survivability, especially against landmines. Another handicap of the BRDM-2 was its petrol engine. A hit vehicle easily caught fire. The BRDM-2s used by the Angolan and Cuban in the Angolan border war had no chance against the 90mm guns of the South African Elan. The South Africans did not hesitate to fire the ZT-3 missiles from the Radol anti-tank vehicles to destroy the BRDM-2s. But hitting this fast vehicle was not an easy task. So the Angolan and Cuban casualties were relatively low. Even the Soviet advisors who operated in the region preferred to travel with the safer BRDM-2s. 
Nevertheless, the BRDM-2 was a well-armed vehicle of that time. The main gun, the 14.5mm KPVT heavy machine gun, has a practical rate of fire of 150 rounds per minute. Its armor-piercing capability is better than the 12.7mm M2 machine gun and nearly equal to 20mm cannon. It has an effective range of 2000 meters and can penetrate 20 mm of armor at a range of 1000 meters. The turret allows the KPVT to be elevated and depressed between negative 5 to positive 30 degrees. Yet, during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, it was observed that the angle of elevation of 30 degrees was ineffective against the Afghan Mujahideen laying in ambush in the higher positions. So, the later model BRDM-2s were equipped with a slightly modified turret that can elevate the gun to positive 60 degrees. A Soviet military advisor serving in Angola in the 1980s wrote in his memoir that the South African Elon crew was afraid of the 14.5mm main gun of the BRDM-2. However, we could not find any information that the Elons was knocked out by these vehicles. The BRDM-2 has two chain-driven bell wheels located between the front and rear wheels on each side. These wheels, lowered and raised by the driver, improve cross-country performance significantly. The trench width of the BRDM-2 is 1.25 meters, while the usual distance for a typical 4x4 vehicle is about 0.5 meters. Besides, the BRDM-2 has a central tire inflation system, which improves the off-road maneuverability. The vehicle can carry supplies for several days of reconnaissance missions deep behind the enemy lines. It has a self-recovery winch with a towing capacity of 4 tons. The USSR also developed many BRDM-2-based vehicles for different missions. There are several radiological chemical reconnaissance versions of the vehicle, such as the Russian BRDM-2-RH, BRDM-2-RHB, the Czech BRDM-2-SH, the East German SPW-42PCH, the Hungarian VS BRDM-2, and the Polish BRDM-2-RS. Its command variants, such as the Russian BRDM-2-UM, the Czech LOTVR and the East German SPW 4DP2UM have no turret. The BRDM-2 hull is used for anti-tank missile carriers. The 9P-122 and 9P-133 have distinct versions of the 9M-14 Malutka missiles whose NATO reporting name is AT-3 Sager. The 9P-124 and 9P-137 carry the different versions of the 9M-17 Felita whose NATO reporting name is AT-2 Swatter. The 9P-148 is the anti-tank variant of the BRDM-2 with the 9M-113 Conqueror's missiles whose NATO reporting name is AT-5 Spandrel. The 9P-31 whose NATO reporting name is SA-9 Gaskin is the air defense missile variant of the vehicle. Some users of the BRDM-2 modified them for other missions. For example, Cuba developed the mortar carrier variant of the vehicle. Numerous armies and guerrilla groups have installed 14.5mm ZPU series or 23mm ZU-23-2 anti-aircraft guns onto the BRDM-2s. These improvised models are still used frequently in wars in Iraq and Syria. Many countries are modernizing the BRDM-2 to increase its firepower and armor protection. Some users are replacing the petrol engine of the vehicle with a diesel engine. Belarus has even developed a personnel carrier called Kaiman by placing a new armored hull on the automotive component of the BRDM-2. It is a widespread and valuable adversary in the current potential conflict zones. So, the USA uses modified Humvee, which have a similar appearance to the BRDM-2 in op for training. The BRDM-2s are actively used in the ongoing Russo-Ukrainian war. But based on the available video footages, they are performing poorly due to their low ballistic protection. The users of the BRDM-2 do not intend to give up this 60-year-old veteran. Maybe this vehicle is not a super weapon that incorporates cutting-edge technologies, but it can do the job at a low cost and without complexity. With minor upgrades, the BRDM-2 remains effective in today's low-intensity conflicts. This vehicle, which has fought for more than half a century, is still a preferred warrior, which makes the BRDM-2 a true legend. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you liked our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel.